Welcome to the Believe Podcast Network SoCal Sweat. My name is Ann McDaniels, a former NFL cheerleader and product manager turned actress and model who dreams of being a UFC fighter. Meow. Learning strategies to help motivate others leads me to bring you interviews each week from a range of athletes, experts in fitness and nutrition, and so much more. Thanks for listening to Believe, the number one podcast for working professionals, and let's push our endorphins to higher performance through SoCal Sweat. This is your host, Ann McDaniels, and thank you so much for joining me on another episode of Believe SoCal Sweat. Today, we are going to be talking about the effects of hunching over our devices, over the laptops, any computers, mobile devices, social media, slouching back in our chairs, and slouching forward when we're watching TV or at our desks, eating, what have you. This really affects our upper back and neck. And maybe you've noticed certain types of pain. Well, this is actually a really big deal in health. It causes pain. It causes a lot of tension and stiffness. It's also referred to as tech neck or horns and hunchback. The tech neck or horns is referred to as exostosis and the hunchback is referred to as kyphosis. Well, we need to improve our posture. We can carry ourselves better. It elongates our body and gives us better health, less pain and tension, and keeps us away from other medical issues that we can, that we might possibly endure if we keep up these activities. Now, why would we want to improve our posture? Well, it's better breathing. Research shows that poor posture negatively affects your ability to breathe deeply and fill your lungs. It increases self-confidence, back relief, improves your mood, it optimizes your digestion, you look skinnier, it reduces headaches, and has greater function as you age. In addition, it also boosts your energy and greatly improves concentration. But overall, it just looks better. Look at people who carry themselves with power. They always have good posture. But so many of us experience what's called kyphosis, and that is basically a rounding of the upper back. It's also referred to as hunchback. If you see someone leaning over, where their neck is forward in their body and their back is hunched, think of the hunchback of Notre Dame. And the other problem is exostosis, or tech neck. We are actually developing a horn in the top of our spine, the back of our neck, due to the fact that we're constantly hunched over on the mobile devices and practicing poor posture. But this can all be corrected because it causes so much tension, pain, irritability, and headaches, and also in addition to long-term health problems with alignment. But never fear, this can all be corrected with exercises and proper posture, just trying to realize keeping your neck up, rolling your shoulders back. But I have a wonderful guest today who is going to help us solve these issues. Well, I am very excited today to introduce my guest, Bridget Rostal. She is a former NFL cheerleader and former NBA cheerleader. She's also a wellness coach and personal trainer. She grew up in Crookston, Minnesota and has been dancing since the age of three. In college, she majored in dance and exercise science and danced on the Minnesota State University dance team. So as a dancer, she knows her body very well and she's able to use her kinesiology and exercise science education and background to help others in their health and wellness and personal training. In addition to helping them with kyphosis, the hunchback syndrome, leaning over their laptops or devices, and she strives to correct this for better posture for everybody. Bridget Rostal also has a program called Postural Alignment Program, Fit by Bridget. Her expertise is available on her website and on Instagram, both at Fit by Bridget, which I will include in the podcast notes. And this includes everything you need with just a resistance band to improve your posture, your longevity, your bone health, alleviates symptoms of pain and pressure and tension to make you feel more invigorated confident and get your head held high literally not your neck in front of your your body creating a a hunchback you don't want to look that way and you don't want to feel that way and i'm so excited to introduce my fellow minnesota viking cheerleader alumni bridget rostel um hello i am bridget thank you for having me and yeah i cheered for the Minnesota Vikings from 2017 to 2019. I did two seasons with them. And prior to that, I did a season with the Minnesota Timberwolves as well. How did NBA differ from the NFL in dance? 
So NBA was very much a hip hop vibe every time we did our court performances. And then you'd, you know, just like Vikings, you would do your sidelines with the palms and be very cheer mode, but still dancing in sneakers and still a little more hip hop. And then Vikings, we would get those moments as well where you could have more of a fun song, a little more hip hop in there, but you always had a strong palm kind of technique to like right. it. It's, it's very different genres, but they're both equally difficult in different ways. And did you have as many appearances as the, as the NFL? No, you know, it's busy in different ways because NBA, you have so many games. You're either at practice or you're at a game. And then NFL, you're either at practice, a game, or an appearance because they just schedule you all over the state. All the time, exactly. It's fun. All the crazy different, you know, events you would never have normally gone to, you get to experience. Right. <laughs> and different people that you would never be um, exposed to. And people don't realize as, as pro cheerleaders, it's not just rah rah on the on the field or on the on the court. We have so many things, so many commitments. And although it's wonderful, um, I have to ask you. I mean, not to be controversial, but what do you think about some of the cheerleaders coming forward and fighting for more money? I mean, I I have mixed feelings about that. Yeah, very controversial. <laughs> I agree. Yeah, and it's like a it's a hard fight because you're fighting for. A position you've always dreamed of just being a professional dancer was something I always sought after and once I got the goal I was like great and then after you've experienced it for a while trying to make enough money at your other job it does get to a point of okay I can I can make this work for so long it's I I believe it's a great way for younger athletes and dancers to experience all of that fun stuff get their you know, resume built up. And a lot of my teammates were in school. They made it work along college classes. And then the other half of us were working. And if it's your dream, you do it. And when you need to bow out, you bow out. But yes, it would be fabulous if they were paid more. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I feel the same way as you do, Bridget, because it's like, you know, the, the connections we make and we would never want to, would, we would never want to go in there saying, oh, we're only here to make connections, but we do. And all the wonderful awards we get and working in Hollywood and New York city and both of these places, sometimes you get the opportunity and it's not about the money. Like if Steven Spielberg says, you're on my film, you work for free. No problem. Like, because, because mm -hmm. of the things that we have exposure to. So I kind of share your viewpoint. I mean, it was, it's icing on the cake to get our money but I would not be one of those to step forward and things like that either. Cause it's, it's a privilege and we are the top, like, you know, 1% that ever gets to do that. And it's, it's the best feeling in the world. But anyway, but please tell us where you grew up in Minnesota and just your trajectory from, from childhood in sports and dance all the way through college and your choices as, as to why you chose those sports and those academics and then moved forward. Yeah, so age three in Crookston, Minnesota, started studio dance. It's basically the top left corner of Minnesota. Okay. <laughs> Very <laughs> far north. And I... Cold. Always, always cold. Yes. Danced every, you know, lyrical, ballet, tap jazz, all the things, and then started a dance team as well in high school. In high school, I did do soccer every year or two i did a little bit of track but as you get older you have to kind of find your way into that one sport it seems these days it's like one track only gotta focus yeah <laughs> so i did lots of dance mainly and then wanted to major in dance so i went off thinking i would probably pair that with business and open up a studio later in life i went to mankato majored in dance, but then while on dance team, I actually got to know the strength and conditioning coach who would take us through the programming for our workouts and was just really interested in that. I had always taught dance class. I had taught some fitness before. So that really made me find exercise science. Then I ended up double majoring there, which Thank God, because now I love my job. I love what I do, training and instructing and all of the things I can, you know, branch out from within the wellness world. So but perfect marriage. Yeah, just kind of training. And I still taught some dance throughout college all while dancing on the dance team and the dance program. And 
eventually was personal training at the end of school. Then Timberwolves started my last semester of college. I was kind of between two places and after that stuck around the Minneapolis area. Oh, that's fantastic. Did you ever work at the gym's personal training or did you start your own business right away? So I had quite a gym and corporate wellness career before this last year. I was in multiple lifetimes. I know Lifetime Fitness is a pretty big gym across the country. Absolutely. I've trained and instructed multiple group exercise classes there. I taught the barbell, the foundation strength, some hit classes, some cardio kickboxing. And in between there, as I've kind of moved place to place, I was in corporate wellness. So I managed, if you've heard of Cargill and Ecolab, yes. their big locations, their campuses that had fitness centers, I would manage those, run incentive programming for employees. So I really loved that job, actually. That was fun to kind of have the variety of programming, not just workouts all the time, but you know, yeah. you're going to get this many steps a day to earn blank. And we're going to organize this, you know, nutrition seminar over lunch at this time. So those kind of different educational series were fun for me too. That is so interesting. I've always wondered about corporate wellness and I had started at General Mills right out of, right out of University of Minnesota. And we had several gyms, but I just, it was so difficult to be able to, I mean, I would see the, the women that, I mean, obviously I would have practice in the morning and night. Um, Cause one of the girls from General Mills was on the team with me, Heather mm -hmm. Corey Pilikowski. And so we would work out in the morning beforehand because we were both at General Mills and then work all day and then have practice at night. So it was insane. But I did see other people struggling, you know, in the cubicle areas and the, you know, in the offices. And especially at General Mills, we would get tons and tons of free product all the cereals, all the granola bars, and people would just sit at their desks and eat and eat and eat. And why would you want to go work out at noon when you're, you're like you're like pancake butt sitting on your on your chair all day? What was the incentive? Like, how did you incentivize people that were like busy traveling and all these things to come to the gym and be able? I mean, I love the programs that you obviously offered. What were the awards incentives? Like, what would you do as far as giving them? You know, like oh rah rah gifts if you accomplish this much or how did that, how did that work? Yeah. The little, you know, the little gifts, water bottles, incentives, things like that weren't a huge draw. I'd say it was more of like the offering up a membership deal for people or linking up with insurance with whatever their health benefits were. If they could get to us say 12 times that month, then it was like, sweet, you hit your mark, you get a little discount throughout your pay-ins. So that was one, but then just offering kind of more in-depth weight loss programs that they could sign up for consults and things where they actually got guidance from our trainers. That was, that was a good one. Um, an easy little, like what most people thought was the greatest thing in the world and took 10 minutes of my time was stretch breaks, going to the middle of a big floor where everyone would come take a break. And it was sometimes not on people's calendar. They wouldn't know about it, but then they would see us all doing these things, chatting in the middle of the hall. And oh, it just great. got people up and moving that normally wouldn't. Yes. And that's, that's also mental wellness, social wellness, everything, because you just get, it's daunting and it can be depressing. No, that's awesome. So you would just kind of go floor to floor and do that. Yes. And, and you said only 10 minutes of your time, but it happened to be the most interesting. And that just kind of leads us to a little bit here. Bridget specializes in what's called kyphosis. And that is, um, there's so many interesting things with posture. And I'm sure this is kind of what we focused on. As we know, we are always over our laptops, our mobile devices. And I remember an article that I read an article about the horn in the back of the neck. We are metamorphing into people that have a horn in the back of the neck we're, we're hunched over. And always, if everyone, if our audience can notice, is the back of your neck ever sore? I'm constantly, you know, pushing the neck back and like pulling my shoulders back. So there's something that's called kyphosis, which Bridget will get into. But then we have scoliosis, which is a curvature of the spine. And as speaking of dancers, a lot of us have lordosis, which is a curvature of the backside, bubble butts. If you have a bubble butt, your, your, the muscle in your butt will pull it up and back, almost like a little duck butt. 
and that lower back gets really sore. So Bridget, could you please break down kind of the three of those for us and the importance and why you focus on kyphosis and especially for women and aging? So I will start with scoliosis because that is the toughest. That one is more of you know you have it you know you have imbalances it's something that you should go in you should get those x-rays done and work with a physical therapist because that's a tough one to make sure everything is balanced and well because everyone's can be different wherever that curvature is up the spine but then kyphosis and lordosis they just can become a new posture for us because desk posture you just you forward, 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 internal rotation in the shoulder, forward head, all of that you are going to feel in the back of the neck, like you were stating, the traps, they all just become so fired up. We over fire the muscles in the front of the body and then those upper back muscles, the rhomboids, the lower traps that hold you in good posture, they've all gotten weak and they don't know how to hold us up anymore. <laughs> right. And so it looks right. decrepit. We, we always see older women that are beautiful, but they're always hunched over. And that, that's where you lose height as well. But um, Bridget, you did say people that have scoliosis know they have that. How would they know if a, if someone just didn't know they had it? Would they feel, would it be painful in the back? Or is it just like you said, off alignment? You, you may not know. It is a tough one just to correct in my experience with training. Um, some telltale signs can be one-sided pain, more so like just the low back on the right or just, you know, just behind my left shoulder, glute, whatever it may be, because usually there becomes some sway in the hips, some imbalance where we can't hold everything centered. But then with kyphosis and just that forward head, all of that, it's its not even just my older clients that I see it in, it's younger people that yeah. are working on laptops or looking at phones or scrolling in this gross position all day. And we Constant just- social media. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, also video gamers. I, I saw a huge um, article on, you know, cause video gaming is a huge competition. I mean, it's a worldwide and there are personal trainers for these video game gurus that, that are just like, that are savants that are so good making so much money because of kyphosis as well, because they're hunched over the video game and then they're getting violent and, and into it, but the rest of their body's not moving. So it's just that area that's getting so um, stressed. So that is another, I mean, you could hit a lot of young kids that are video gamers and with their parents and make even more money with that because it's such an important thing. And um, how do you go about correcting this or what are some exercises you can even do? So I learned very early on just great go-to resistance band exercises. In high school, I was actually experiencing tension headaches from that kind of poor desk position all day. My body is not good at sitting and <laughs> it did yeah. not end up feeling well in a desk. So everything that pulls the shoulder blades back and down. So you think rhomboids, pulling those shoulder blades together, lats, those pull-up muscles, pulling the shoulder blades down. If you can get your resistance band out, getting those pull-up parts to get those upper back muscles, squeezing the shoulder blades together, and then pull downs from above to get those lats working as well. When those are fired up, I let my people know if you can activate them first thing in the morning, set yourself up for the day. Much better reminder of holding your posture that way. If you've activated the muscles, same with people. So on the lower end, the lordosis you mentioned, mm -hmm. if I have a client or, you know, my husband, I even tell this to, your low back is swaying. You know, Maybe he has a good butt, Bridget. <laughs> Right. He does, but <laughs> good score. Good girl. <laughs> we don't want pancake ass in this house. <laughs> Strong glutes are everything, yes. but you need the core muscles to hold that pelvis under because what happens is that sway back your pelvis. If you think of it as a bowl, the bowl is pouring all of your water forward. That low back 
stays arched and then all of the compression on that spine starts to build up. So we've got to make sure that alignment is on and activating the core first thing in the morning is another huge that's day starter. A, that's a great idea. And like what, what you said with for the kyphosis and the arm movements that you made, well, well uh, these will be in the podcast notes. I always, when I get up and like go to the bathroom and brush my teeth, I always go to the door and like press out and that's that will force you to even go further. And what do you think of the apparatus where it's almost a little vest that you um, put around your around your armpits and then it pulls pulls your, um, your, your, your lats back and your scapula back. Is that a good thing or is that overcompensating and then you're not developing those muscles? Like if you were to be sore at your desk, could you wear that like maybe for 15 minutes and then kind of, kind of adjust your posture and then take it off or would you not recommend that? It's not my first recommendation just yeah. because I'm so, I'm strength-based. I'm more in the mindset of if we build the muscles in correct posture, we're good to go. Whereas that apparatus will hold you there itself. You don't have to necessarily turn it's a off cheat. the muscles. Yeah. So it's a good reminder, if anything, but it's like putting on that potential ab corset that's going to quote unquote, give you a six pack while sitting there. You know, you've got to right. actually use those muscles to get them. <laughs> or how about the oils that you can put on your stomach and it all of a sudden becomes an 18 pack. Oh, right. those work so well. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Now, Bridget, what if someone was on a plane and they had like a six hour flight? Cause I do a lot of LA, New York flights and always I'm constantly fidgeting because I want to get the blood movement. I don't want a blood clot. I always have to like, you know, kind of shake my legs and do little stretches. Obviously someone cannot, you know, do these exercises on the plane unless they're in first class in a pod away from everybody else. What are some of the things that they could do with their back and neck while they're sitting, maybe hunched in a middle row seat on Spirit Airlines, which is the worst of the worst, and they can't go anywhere with, with the even more compressed seating? What could they do? So if you just think of the muscle groups you need to engage, could start with what you kind of think of as a chicken bob, if you're pushing your head into that seat, reverse oh, chicken yeah. bob, activating the back of the neck, then you're really lining up the ear over the shoulder. That's everything, that alignment, ear over shoulder, shoulder over hip, holding that position as long as you can for a little bouts. And then same with the shoulder blades, just squeezing the scapula back. Oh, that feels back. good. Sure. Mm -hmm. And it's a really good way to kind of showcase that you're kind of crazy to your seatmate and then may maybe they'll move. <laughs> right. You can add a little noises there like you have Tourette's. <laughs> <laughs> I like you're thinking, um, Bridget. And you ha and I think you had one more. Did you put your shoulders up and down? Um, another one I just throw in with whenever I have clients start to work on that external rotation. When sure. we're done, I say, come back to that anatomical position, hands forward, shoulders back and down, holding that shoulder down, release but through the traps and neck because that's where we all hold tension. And the more you can release tension there and through the front of the chest and the shoulder, the easier it is to hold that posture. It is, and even better to add to that, it would be to put your arm out a little bit and point, point the pointer finger just a little bit and then it elongates even more. That's mm -hmm. excellent. And you know, all of this, like you said, is all based on proper weight. I mean, proper resistance and developing our muscles and our strength. And I am such a believer in resistance training and weightlifting. And so many women are not. And even on the Vikings, we had weightlifting days, which I thought was amazing. I grew up lifting weights as in athletics and my mom always did. And probably you did for soccer as well, correct? Or were you, were you not on the weights at that point? No, I feel like I started lifting weights at probably age 14. <laughs> sure, and that's excellent. Now, what do you say to women that, because I've had several podcasts on why women should lift and why everybody should lift. What do you tell women? Because there are so many times where, I mean, I have friends who are like, oh no, I don't want to get bulky. And they're already a little bit soft. I'm like, you're not going to get bulky. That's going to, and, and please like affirm the fact that we burn more calories at rest with more muscle. Correct, Bridget? Correct. Your yes. muscle, I, one of the trainers I used to work with, I loved this. She would say, your muscle mass is your best 
insurance for just having that natural calorie burn. If anything, yes. at rest, the more muscle mass on you, the better you are in metabolism, in caloric burn at rest. Mm -hmm. And to bulk is very difficult. So mm -hmm. I've done the bodybuilding world with a client myself. I've, I've done it and to put on a lot of lean muscle mass takes a lot of heavy lifting often and a lot more food than you're used to eating. A lot eating. of food, exactly. <laughs> so it's very hard to do. I think people don't realize that. And right, the more you have, the easier it is to burn. And why not continue that if that's a goal, you know, weight loss or just body composition change. Why not continue that burn after the workout instead of just during like your cardio sessions? I like what you said. It's insurance. And that's a really good, good way to put it. Um, how did you, and can you, can you describe, you did, you did the bikini competition, not figure, correct? Correct. Okay. So for our audience, there's bikini, bikini is the most feminine of all the bodybuilding for women. And then it goes figure and then it goes fitness, correct? And then bodybuilders. So Bridget did the bikini, which is absolutely beautiful. And when you, when you would see her on stage, she would basically, you would basically look emaciated and with muscle. I mean, just in super tan, but if you were to see Bridget probably two weeks prior to that, she would be bulky, correct? You would you would have to bulk up and then you would have to dehydrate yourself to shred, correct? So I'd say you're aiming to get that kind of bulk phase in just right away. The way that everyone does it is very different. For sure. some person. But taking uh, what I like to phase out is around 12 to 14 weeks, that first three to four week chunk you're in that all right we're putting on as much lean muscle mass as possible and then starting a slow deficit just keeping up the training as much as you can and there are some crazy end techniques that coaches and trainers will use with the dehydration the salts changes what you can do to your body is amazing but it is scary so i like to be as natural as possible in that process and just continue the plan. The more consistent you are throughout as you follow that plan and slight changes within your caloric intake and macronutrients, you get down to an extremely fit body. And if you do it right, you don't have to make those crazy, you know, exactly. Adjustments it's, at the end. <laughs> for sure. It's, it's a fascinating sport and competition. And I've always loved it, but it is, it is quite dangerous. And a lot of people, especially the men, <clears throat> that are taking anabolics constantly, they are warned that they're playing with fire with their health. Like they, it's kind of the mindset of, I don't care. I'd rather die looking fantastic than, you know, <clears throat> getting old and, and possibly getting getting fat or in their mindset. And there's a lot of like manorexia in that area too. But like Bridget said, I mean, the, the eating portion is a full-time job. I mean, you are weighing the macros and everything. And God forbid, if you want to travel somewhere, you've got to go to gas stations and find microwaves to do your oatmeal and do your chicken breasts and all these things. <laughs> and and it, it, it's hard to travel when you eat super, super healthy and clean. I myself know that well. I have to call ahead, have stuff shipped. I mean, and if it ships to a hotel, you get charged with a $50 holding fee per day. And I'm like, yeah. It, it arrived here 12 days ago so I, it's 50 times 12 yes miss oh that's, that's a great <laughs> deal but yet that yet i'd be in an area where there's like a it's a food desert and i know i have to keep up my regimen because i've got some kind of a competition or show or something so mm -hmm. it's a full-time job and it isn't it isn't easy to always do these things but um did you hire a coach and nutrition coach or did you just kind of go by your own knowledge and what you've read and what you've experienced with your own education I was my own coach and one of my good friends I went to school with in exercise science, I used as my kind of check-in person. It's always nice to have a buddy, another oh. eye, another, yeah. you know, just at a point where you're very much analyzing and overthinking your own body. It's not the most mentally stable place for everyone to be. So you always want someone else to check in with. That's great. Were they doing it at the same time or was it just someone that 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 was supporting you? Um, you didn't do it with anybody, like a friend that you both did the competition together or no? That was a, a male friend who had competed before as well. So he was my check-in go-to. Perfect. And then after I had done that, I felt 
you know, more knowledgeable in that world. And I recently trained a client to do her show. So we did more of a weekly kind of check-in on just energy levels. We would do photo check-ins as well to look at changes because it is not all about the numbers. There's a lot more. And it's a lot of politics too. I mean, it's people that know people once you got on stage and everything like that, just like anything else. But yes, the energy level and it's, I mean, I've not only done competitions like that, but I've also hosted backstage. Um, I just did Venice Beach Gold's Gym a couple of years ago. And um, I just remember all the Germans in the back, you know, Germany, Germans are so hardcore. I mean, even (laughs) on the Olympics, I think it was a judo, one of the judo coaches slaps his, 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 um, his athletes on the, on the face twice. And it's just like, this was on the today show. And they were like, Oh my God. They're like, and the athletes like, no, this is how we wake up. And Savannah Guffer's like, well, I just get, I just go to Starbucks for that. But anyway, that's my <laughs> method. I mean, he like punches them in the face. So these Germans hardcore, and they were all like the best of the best. They were eating apples and spitting them out. And Bridget, as you can attest to, that's just that little bit of glucose that they're putting that sugar in their body. Sometimes people do honey, peanut butter, um, a Reese's peanut butter cup, and then they, what's called, they, they swole on stage, they get vascular because you're, yes, the pump, <laughs> and because you're depleted of water, I mean, you guys have no energy at all once you're out there, and then you've got to come back out, and even the posing and the smiling takes so much energy. I mean, just like even even performing for a crowd of 60,000 as dancers, it is so exhausting, and then you've got to have that perma smile. And you have to go to the bathroom, but no one cares about that. You you know, it's just, it's, it's a lot and it's a performance job and it is a full-time job. But like you said, you did not get that muscular just from lifting weights. It was a bulk and it was a lot of eating and it's expensive. I mean, you can do it affordably, but it is not a cheap sport either with all the training and the supplements. And did you take any supplements like aminos or anything like that? Creatine perhaps? I have never um, used creatine. My only supplementation is protein powder and then vitamins. Really, I didn't go hard into the supplements because natural is kind of just my mindset with all of my clients and training anyways. So that's really good. Um, Did you take any protein powders? Like, did you do soy, whey, anything like that? So I've honestly done them all protein powder is my jam i make everything and everything possible into a protein ball bowl pancake whatever i can but lately i have found the vegan options work best just with my digestion i know that some people love whey and you can get you know the most bang for your buck as far as grams of protein with some of those options but sure My biggest disclaimer whenever I'm suggesting what options you should use is the ingredients list. Look at the ingredients list. Can you pronounce all of the ingredients? Do you know what they are? Right. If not, do your research and figure out if that's right for you or not. The brand that I use and give to my clients is Organifi, and I've worked with them due to that reason. Their ingredients list is minimal. They go with superfoods only and it's good they're very they're very reputable and do they do the vegan and the way just vegan. just vegan okay mm-hmm. um and can you attest to the fact that vegan does not mix as well with like the chocolate or if you want to make a peanut butter smoothie whey is probably better like for taste correct and the vegans the vegan options for protein seem to be better with the fruits have you found that no mm-hmm. Okay. Um, the ones I get are chocolate or vanilla. And this morning I made dark chocolate peanut butter protein balls for the weekend. That's Wonderful. my like, if we're going somewhere, Bridget makes the protein balls because I can't bake or do anything like that. <laughs> you do everything else. And it's 2021. We do not have to. We don't want to. <laughs> yeah. And then I, I don't know. I think the vanilla mixes well with fruit okay. too. So it's whatever your taste buds are, really, you can make it work. I think that Organifi just came out with a pumpkin spice one too, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, and it's supposed to be really good. Tea. It's a nice like evening calm down. Very delicious. Yes, very good. I think they, have you ever um, heard the podcast Mind Pump? I listen to that all the time. They're amazing. Almost every day I listen so to So great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love them. They're they're awesome. And, and, and Sal just wrote that big book on resistance training and the importance of it. And, and they've had a lot of women on there you know, that they've, they've tried to encourage to do it, but they're still so scared. I know I have 
seen quite a few Miss Olympia posts. I follow quite a few gals on Instagram, but I don't know if that's recent or if it happened and they came back. Came back, hopefully. They yeah. fought pretty hard. They fought pretty hard. So that was awesome. And yeah. I mean, and even just the good shows like Glow, Glow empowers women to be strong and all, all of these things. So that's a really good thing. And I have to ask you, when you did the competition for, it was Gopher State Classic, correct? For the bodybuilding the bikini, bikini competition. And congratulations. How did you place? I won my division. Oh my God. Amazing. What was it? The um, tall division? How tall are you? So I was in novice bikini. That was my first ever and then I am five seven okay get it that's awesome now when you when you were shredded to that level did you have any kind of and you don't have to answer this if it's uncomfortable any kind of like psychological issues as far as you had to get back to normal when you were used to seeing yourself as this almost like perfect specimen on the cover of a magazine and I guess I'm asking you this because it's a struggle with not only men but but women even more so but then you see that magazine image and then you go back to normalcy. And I want to give the message that when we, when we, when we are on magazines and I model full time, that is not what we look like in normal everyday life. It mm-hmm. is the shredding down and you are dehydrated. Like you will, like you said, the weird tactics, you take water pills, not recommended any, anybody, but to look that way, it's not normal. So we don't want to send a negative message. Did you, feel like, oh my God, I'm getting fat. <gasps> I don't look like I like I did on stage. Did you suffer any of that a little bit? Oh, absolutely. I've gone through multiple phases of body dysmorphia kind of sums it up for, you know, this world of trying to compete and perform at a certain aesthetic. Mm-hmm. So even on Vikings, I'll remember taking a photo with a friend and then we'll look at it and go, oh my God, you know, like, oh, this is bad. And then you look back at that photo two years later and go, no, you looked really good. <laughs> you just have to yeah. step away from right. the moment you're living in sometimes when you're too critical and you're too in the program, the, you know, whatever that end goal is. Mm-hmm. So as long as that's in the back of your mind throughout the process, you just kind of you step away, you be in line with not just you, but that's why having someone else to check in with who is a little more level-headed than potentially right. you are at that moment is huge. So yes. as long as it's front of mind, back of mind, either way, it's, yeah, it's important to check in with someone who's going to really back in and say, you know what, you actually look great, you're doing great, or maybe come back a little, maybe take a day off from the gym or your, you know, training for whatever it is. Sure. That's important too. Sure. That's really great. And, um, it is. And, and if we weren't in these careers, I've, I've often wondered, would I be as strict of myself or regimented? But I think I would. I mean, I just think when you grow up that way or in a family that way or something like that, it's hard, it's hard to break away from. It's also difficult. And can you recommend Let's just say that someone, like a woman had great weight loss. I mean, she maybe dropped 75 pounds and her peer group, the people that she always went to Taco Tuesday night with, all of a sudden, and even maybe her husband is kind of treating her poorly, like, oh, you're not one of us now. And they're kind of like skinny shaming her, if you will. Did you ever feel that when you were dieting down, especially maybe even for the dance teams or for this competition, that you'd be treated unfairly by somebody who sort of just kind of negative the negative body type of like oh you're so skinny like oh I guess you can't eat that how do you handle that and have you experienced that because that happens to me a lot and I try to be very kind back but sometimes it does hurt you know right and I try and take that with a grain of salt with it would normally just come from friends who want to have a good time with you want to go out for drinks and do all the things and if you're you know saying no to things for some reason. Yeah. Yeah. You're labeled as like, okay, you're just in strict mode, but then you'll come to find other friends will also support you along whatever journey that is and get excited for you. But yeah, it's a tough balance of 
you want people to want you around and have fun, but you also want to be supported. So as long as they're on your side and cheering you on, and then maybe, you know, reeling you back into normal when needed. It's right. <laughs> and you, they, they, they should help you with your goals. And But I've seen a lot of divorces happen because potentially either the male or female or, or what the partner doesn't feel is up to par and then they get insecure around them or that empowers the other person to get better as well. So, and that kind of leads me to how did you, um, when, when you die down to that level, uh, it's, it gets irritating. You're like hangry. Hangry is even more so when you're a bikini competitor. How did your husband handle the mood swings? If you had any at all, did, did he like tease you or did he help you and support you and tell you like where to go when they did happen? <laughs> <laughs> You know, I may have gotten overly upset about him eating for open auditions, but <laughs> there are those moments where you just have to stop yourself and go, okay, is it the end of the world that my husband ate his chicken breast? Can I go <laughs> home? I think so. So those moments, like step back, reel it in, but it does get hard. You make such concrete plans for whatever meal it is that you think yeah. is going to get you there. And again, just stepping back to normal sometimes, take a breath is uh -huh. need. <laughs> it is. No, it, it, hunger, but, yeah. hunger, is a, hunger is a big thing. Um, and did you meal prep every Sunday night? How did you, how did you go about doing that? I'm a little bit more of a every few days kind of gal, I'd say. Sure. Even, even now we'll just try and make more options with dinner, a bigger portion and save for the next day. Yeah. If we're just, you know, living life, being healthy, not super prepping. And it's more ex exciting because otherwise it's the same thing every single day. And then you can kind of look forward to things. And what did you, what was your biggest food that you had to give up during that time that was just like, oh my God, this is the hardest part. Maybe the, maybe the, the waffle fries from Champ's sports bar, anything that was really hard to give up? You know, I eat healthy foods for the most part. I overeat peanut butter and all of the nut butters because that is my favorite food. Love all of the fats. We're all little kids with peanut butter. butter. It's like amazing. <laughs> and then you, then you bring a Nutella and it's a whole other story. <laughs> oh, yes. Um, granola and cereal are probably things that I could just, you know, go to town on way too much. And then cutting out wine drinks. That was the big thing that it was like, all right, I do enjoy going out, having a glass, doing whatever. But in that phase, that's such a big one to cut. That's it's not going to help you in any way. Right, <laughs> and that's where that that's where that's where it's difficult socially because it's like, oh, you're boring. You're not drinking anymore. Well, it's a choice and things like that. So that's good. And plus, you spoke about um, we talked about mind pump quickly, and I am also all about the anabolics, not steroids, but anabolic <laughs> eating. Um, like like she was like Bridget was saying the peanut butter balls, and you can recreate any kind of cheap food with the anabolic eating. I mean, just for example, I mean, just the pancakes alone, we can still enjoy pancakes and waffles in the morning. We just add those protein powders and things like that. And Greg Doucette, I don't know if you listen to him. He's amazing. Um, he's a, another bodybuilder. But anyway, it's almost like he kind of says, when you look for a partner, you want, you want a 10, you want the 10 perfect 10, but will you settle for eight? And it's kind of the same with food. Of course you want the McDonald's Big Mac, but can you settle for perhaps maybe a leaner meat vegan meat or maybe the bison meat that's less less fatty and having a little less calories more protein and you get more bulk because i would rather eat voluminous with protein than a tiny little like piece of, of chocolate and then to get me through i want a lot of food so it's called anabolic dieting um and foods and in your peanut butter balls surely with the protein it's anabolic recipes, not steroids. These are totally different things. <laughs> protein focused is how yes. I always tell my clients, just make protein the center of your snacks, your meals, that'll keep you satisfied, keep them exactly. up happy. Perfect. And then can you just quickly take me through or us through your regimen every day for what you do for, um, for fitness and just kind of take us through a typical day of eating if you were just to be a normal healthy day of eating just kind of little just a workout and then foods um days are dependent on my client schedules really because sure. i am currently training in people's homes in a couple different gyms 
right now an outdoor class and then I'll do a couple of studio classes starting next month in the fall. So let's say Monday morning, I got up, I did, I always have hot coffee with half a scoop of protein and my coconut creamer all blended up into this wonderful mocha caffeination. Yeah. That's usually the start to my day. And then after the workout, I have berries with a little more protein powder in it all kind of mixed up into this bowl that I put nut butter over or maybe it'll be a banana and some mixture instead um then I'll train I think two or three clients before coming home for lunch when I'm able to come home I like to just make up a bunch of eggs and veggies and maybe some tortilla chips and salsa, something that's a little more substantial going. Then I train a little more. I might bring, you know, another piece of fruit or I love the the bar I love right now is the perfect bar. Have you ever had one of those? Yes, I have. That is really good. Those are great. And then my husband, I don't know if you can see these animals behind me. I, I, I've been wanting to comment the whole time because I'm originally from Wisconsin. So I'm like looking at the, at the, at the duck. I know that's a mallard. And then I can't tell what that, that picture is because there's a glare. Oh, is it two um, dogs? Yeah. Rottweilers? Do yeah. we have Rottweilers? No. So those are just, just a hunting dog photo. He I has, love it. But... I love it. I love it. It's back in the Midwest. It takes me there. It's so nostalgic. <laughs> oh my God. So that's... he hunts all of the things. Pheasants, moose, deer, <laughs> We will maybe have elk coming in soon. We'll see yes. how we on that trip. So we're very lucky to have all this organic meat. We went to Alaska recently Amazing. and got a ton of fish. So our dinners are normally like a wonderful game meat. Oh, the Good. best kind. Did you get sockeye salmon? Whatever. You, my cousins are there right now. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, so good. Um, do you Do you hunt as well? No, I am not big on the hunting, but I do love fishing. I love being on the lake at all times as much Me as too. possible. So summer fishing, I'm all about. So jealous. I love what's the, what's that what's that awesome place? Is it Fletcher's? Yeah. Yes. Oh my god. They're on their volleyball and broom ball leagues. <laughs> oh, so much fun. I love it. It's such a good camaraderie. And do you I do you eat a lot of venison? That's like one of my favorites. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Living in LA, I mean, it is so expensive here because it's like, it's like gold because there isn't venison, you know, yeah. and they ship it in. And I've told all the men in my family, I'm like, ship your venison into LA <laughs> so we can have this huge black market of, of food to sell. Cause it's, I mean, there's a, there's a restaurant here called Animal and it's so expensive because I'm in the land of the vegans in Los Angeles. I mean, everybody, not everybody, obviously, but for the most part, you have more healthy food than because it's, it's a lifestyle and a lot of times people be like you're eating meat yes you know it, it, it just it's like almost like you're chastised or beat up because you're eating meat and it's just like no well you need it hey Bridget how did you and your husband meet we met freshman year of college oh. I taught him how to snowboard and then we started going on all of the snowboarding club trips together I love it you are like an amazing woman I mean you're a renaissance you're beautiful you do all this like the hunt you, you go on those trips that's so cool he really he landed a good one that's really awesome and then what what are your dog's names and what what kind are they Norman the pug oh. he is a cute little man and then Jack. <laughs> the German short hair. He does all the hunting with me. Oh, yeah. But Bridget, thank you so much for coming on today. And how can we support you in your career? Um, Go follow Fit by Bridget at my Instagram profile. You can check out my website from there. Link to my Facebook as well. But yeah, I kind of post everything through there. You can reach out to me at fitbybridget at gmail.com with any questions. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. And this will be all in the notes section. And can anybody hire you? Like if if my neighbor right now, I just, I tell her about you. Can she hire you via Zoom? So what I can do not local is offer my online programs, which are on my website. So those are able to purchase. And then my nutrition coaching that I do virtually, we just set up Zoom calls, regular calls and check-ins and can be done all over the world. Have a wonderful rest of your day and we will talk to you soon. Thank you. And that was the incredible Bridget Rostal of Fit by Bridget. 
We appreciate you for listening, and please rate and subscribe to the show on iTunes. You can also listen on Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, Luminary Tuned In, or at Believe.com. You can always reach out to me for any questions or topics that you'd like covered on the show at Anne McDaniels or at Anne McDaniels Actress. And I will see you next time on Believe SoCal Sweat.